music is a wonderful thing. It brings people together. It brought a Klansman together with a black guy. After that, it dawned on me, Daryl, the answer to your question that's been plaguing you, how can you hate me when you don't even know me? Who better to ask than someone who would join an organization that has over a hundred year history of practicing hating people who do not look like them and people who do not believe as they believe. My name is Scott Shepard. I'm 59 years old. I was born and raised in Indianola, Mississippi. I came from a very dysfunctional family. My dad was a very violent alcoholic. I had low self-esteem. I didn't like myself. I didn't like anyone, actually. I had a lot of anger in me. I was looking for just a place in life, something. And actually, the main thing I guess I was looking for was love, because I didn't feel that at home. The racial atmosphere was very tense due to the civil rights movement. It was one of those cities, railroad tracks that run through the middle of town. Whites lived on one side and blacks lived on the other. From my years of 17 on up, I was involved with not just the Ku Klux Klan, but other white supremacist groups, where as soon as I took the oath, I had an immediate feeling of importance. I spent very close to 20 years of my life in the white supremacist movement. I had this little bitty voice in the back of my head all the time. I mean, from, from day one, wondering, saying, do you really believe the things that you're doing? My mother was not racist. My dad was not racist. In fact, I was raised by a black lady. She had actually worked for my grandmother. My mother was adopted. I loved her and she loved me. She loved my entire family and all that was still in the back of my mind. I was starting to realize, you know, what I was doing was wrong. I had no friends. I, I did even contemplate suicide. I was very depressed. And in that dark period of not knowing what to do. We should have been talking about this kind of thing for a long time and bringing some kind of understanding about the racial divide. I reached out to Daryl after seeing him on television. Daryl just popped into my life. Just the actions of him responding, I started feeling better inside and I started having a little, just a little bit of hope. Daryl extended his hand and actually just extended his heart too and, and when we became brothers. And I withdrew from the race. Daryl saved my life really because I had lost relationships with my family. One of my twin boys started picking up on the things that I was doing inside the Ku Klux Klan. And I'm very fortunate that I got out or changed my life before my son got involved. My relationships became positive again, and then I was able to start developing another relationship with my daughter. And I'm able to visit with my granddaughters. I didn't even know them, but we got a great relationship with them now. I learned a lot from Daryl. We found a lot of things in common, and I mimicked Daryl to try to do the same thing and try to help some of these people that are involved. If it wasn't for Daryl, I'd still be stuck in that hole not knowing what to do, and I couldn't help anyone. How do you feel today, a black man holding this robe and hood? Well, actually, you know, I no longer need that. I no, long, no longer need that robe and that hood to feel powerful for where I'm at now. It means a lot to me that you have the robe because of the, the relationship that you and I have built. I gave up something that really made me feel important 
and made me feel like I was someone and I gave it to you, I don't need it anymore. I mean, I gave up that life. You are not this person? I am not that person anymore. I don't miss that robe at all. And not only does it uh, mean a lot to me, you know, it means a lot to my family too. And you are our family too. I don't know what I'd do without you. We are a family. And this family is one that's gonna last. You bet it is. Oh, you know it is.